before I actually start working with kids in the water and showing you how to essentially teach your own kids to swim or at least expedite the, the process quite a bit compared to just having regular swim lessons. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you, just you and me, you and me and the camera, exactly what you need to have as far as tools, as well as exactly what you need to be doing with these tools to be able to start the swim process or speed it along at the will. So um, interesting enough, probably the two most important skills that I've found that prevents kids from actually swimming is their lack of ability to exhale underwater and be able to take breaths. Most instruction is going to focus on holding your breath. And if you hold your breath and you don't exhale any air at all when you're underwater, it's impossible to breathe when you lift your head up out of the water. So um, you have to be able to teach. First, the child to be comfortable with water on their head, on their face, and eventually to go underwater. And then the next step from there would be to actually show them how to exhale underwater and take breaths. The other skill that is uh, not focused on at all for some reason most of the time, instructors just focus on you know the, with the general you know arm you know arm pulls and kicking and holding your breath. Um, but not only do you have to be able to exhale underwater to be able to breathe, you also have to be able to maintain a prone position, a position on top of the water, not standing up in the water, to be able to be mobile in the water. As soon as you stand up in the water, you're going to sink. You're going to pull yourself down. And try yourself if you are a swimmer. <laughs> try um, swimming along and then just start to do like a crawl. Bend your legs underneath you and see how fast you, you stop swimming. And um, okay, so those are the two skills I'm going to focus on showing you at least how to have the right tools on hand and what to do with them. And then whenever I'm working with kids in the water, I'll be able to focus mainly on positioning how to interact with the kids to get them to accomplish the skill. So, real easy. Have to have a, a bucket. It doesn't have to be quite this big. It can be smaller, but anything that you can actually pour from. Have to have a sponge. The reason why a sponge is so important is because you can do a little bit of water at a time on their faces. One, two, three, four. So it's a much more, less of the best... <laughs> less evasive as it goes. Now, once they're really comfortable with the sponging, then you can pour buckets of water on their head. So not only is, is it help, helpful for them to be able to learn how to swim, but it's also a lot of fun. <laughs> Gotta have a toy, some type of toy, so maybe a high value toy. Anything that would get the, let's see, for young children especially, to be able to get them to return back to the wall or back to the stairs or to be able to get them to look up, to be able to breathe. A uh, toy is very important to have on hand. And then for older kids, really, as soon as they're comfortable going underwater and they'll tolerate it, you need to have goggles. You, you may think that goggles would prevent uh, or um, not help a kid learn how to swim faster, but it indeed to be able to see underwater to be comfortable with your eyes open and not having to close your eyes or have to worry about your eyes burning is very very important so as soon as they can wear goggles you want to get them on them they're very cheap you can get them for a couple bucks uh, but you really want a better type i use like you know these speedo goggles or like five bucks and, uh, and then that really helps a lot so that way they're comfortable when they're in the water, and that's really paramount, as you can imagine, to get any, uh, anything accomplished in the water. So, bucket of water, everything you do when you pour is always on three. One, two, three. Always have to be on three because that's the cueing. Same thing with the sponge. That's how you use these. So, a little bit of water. One, two, three. As you're getting comfortable.
comfortable, always on three. Once they're comfortable, big bucket of water, one, two, three. And you want to make it fair, you want to do it to yourself, that helps. If they don't like it, a lot of times they don't. So that's for the bucket and the sponge. Goggles are self-explanatory. <laughs> The toy, again, you want to use that to get them to look up or to get them to return. You can put it behind them when you go off of the wall and get them to go back to the toy. So um, that's it for kind of an introduction and uh, basic overview. So hopefully very soon I'll be able to get some, some kids in the water and be able to show you how these tools are integrated at a swim lesson. Fishbowl, sign it up.